Steve, I hear you're writing an article about minimal agitation technique. Is that right? I am, Peter, and it's a follow-up article to an article that uh, unblinkingeye.com published about my uh, exposure and negative design. The extreme minimal agitation technique that I use is in concert with the way I expose and design negatives, and it also is in concert with the way I print those resulting negatives. But I want to be clear about the purpose of this article is so that other photographers can be successful with the technique, and also to separate myself and the technique that I use, and actually perfected and discovered the technique in 2003. So in the research that I, had, I have done leading up to preparation for this article, I wanted to see how the whole um, evolution of my own uh, discovery happened in 2003, 2004. I had occasion to do uh, some Google searching to, uh, to research that information and come to find out I was quite surprised that I stopped searching after four pages of Google searches when I, where I found just scores of videos and informational articles about stand and semi-stand development. What struck me about those that discovery was none of those articles were published prior to my discovery. So not only does it validate the point that I did discover and perfect this technique, what I really want to accomplish is with this article is to exactly explain to you the fundamentals of how and why this technique is so powerful in conjunction with the way I design negatives and ultimately print those negatives. That's what I want to communicate in this Extreme Minimal Agitation article. The three big benefits to Extreme Minimal Agitation is um, film speed will be maximized because the film does uh, stay in the developer for quite an extended amount of time. Uh, it's a compensating technique uh, by its nature, so that the highlights are controlled to a much greater um, degree than with traditional means of uh, film processing. But the big, the big key is minute, the uh, mid-tone contrast will be exaggerated. Now, some people might uh, not like the word exaggerated. Um, the most difficult thing for any silver printer to maximize is mid-tone contrast, mid-tone relationships. This technique not only exaggerates them, but it creates a smoothness and a vibrancy, and those are the two words that have most commonly been associated with my prints. There's a vibrancy to the midtones, yet there's a smooth transition of tonal relationships. Steve, let's start at the beginning. The beginning happened way back in 2003. I became aware of Sandy King and his, his in, essentially invention of PyroCat HD developer. Consequently, read an article as it happened on unblinkingeye.com that uh, Sandy had written about staining developers. At the end of the article, Sandy had written, um, and I can almost remember the quote verbatim, he said, well, fraught with dangers, semi-stand development can produce extraordinary results. That got my attention. Um, I accepted the challenge, I went after it, and, and it, it took several years that I'll, that I'll go into in more detail in the, in the article. But it was finally successful, and, and that's what I want to share with, with the public, is the road to that success. Steve, where have I heard Unblinking Eye before? Uh, as I just mentioned, they have a number of, of terrific articles on all different types of photographic processes. Um, Sandy King's original staining article is there. Uh, my article about exposure and negative design is there. This article um, should appear uh, there when I'm uh, when I'm completed it. Steve, how did some of the various terms about minimal agitation come up? That's a good question, Peter, and and, and it is a question that sometimes causes confusion. Um, when I first processed these pieces of film and, and achieve some type of success with minimal agitation. I immediately reached out to Sandy King and although I had never met him before I recognized him as the creator of PyroCat um, developer and I also recognized that he was a, a scholar of not only most things um, film related uh, but also silver gelatin. So I reached out to him and we developed a dialogue back and forth and because of my success um, the two of us decided we would assign terms to various forms of minimal agitation. And right there, just the term minimal agitation is nothing more than a reference to different types of minimal agitation. Stand development is a development that has only one initial agitation and then the film stands 
for the remainder of the time. Now that time could be 30 to 40 to 60 minutes. That's stand development, one agitation. Semi-stand development has that again, it has that initial agitation, but also has an agitation in the middle of that standing length of time. Extreme minimal agitation are two agitation cycles after the initial agitation. So there's essentially three agitation cycles. That's extreme minimal agitation. Once again, the term minimal agitation is nothing more than a general reference to all of those um, methods of film agitation. Steve, what else has Sandy King said about your EMA technique? That's a good question, Peter. I have a mentorship student out in California, and as it happens, um, John hosts a lot of different types of workshops, and he hosted a carbon printing workshop that Sandy King was invited to uh, participate in. And so in some downtime, my mentorship student asked uh, Sandy King, gee, you know Steve Sherman, don't you? And Sandy said, yes, I do. What do you think of Steve's prints? And Sandy King just simply said, I, th I think they're the best silver prints I have ever seen. While that's humbling to me, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very proud of that, um, I do think it's, it's more Sandy's reaction to my way of exposing and designing the negatives in conjunction with this extreme minimal agitation technique that, is, that has taken years to evolve to its present point, and the way that I ultimately print those negatives on multi, using multi-contrast papers. That, I believe, is what Sandy's reacting to. Steve, can you tell us exactly what happens with reduced agitation? I can, Peter. With reduced agitation, the developer is significantly more dilute than a traditional means of processing a piece of film, so that allows extended time. What happens during that extended time is the highlights in the original uh, exposure, they use up the developer quite rapidly, so they stop developing. While the shadows, because they are not as dense, they continue to develop. So you get a relationship that's actually compressed over time. And when this time is extended for as long as, say, sometimes 20 to 30 minutes, you get a compaction and a compression of tonalities that, that pay very, very favorable dividends when I'm printing the way I use uh, multi-contrast papers. Only when these highlights exhaust the developer does an adjacency effect actually happen. Developer has to exhaust for an adjacency effect to happen. Steve, what exactly is an adjacency effect? I'm going to explain and show on a dry erase board here exactly what an adjacency effect is, but before I do that, I want to take the time and explain the difference between uh, traditionally processed negatives such as tray processing, drobo processing, any type of processing with continuous agitation, as opposed to a minimal agitation technique that I developed and now employ. What you're going to see here in this bottom graphic is, is the slope and the curve of, of a common film. So what you see here is the toe. So down in here there's no exposure whatsoever. Up in here you get zone 3 and whatnot. So you have in here zone 4, zone 5, zone 6 on this straight line. So if you give significantly more film development, you're going to raise zone 6 up to zone 7 and zone 5 up to zone 5 and 2 thirds, something like that. But you're not going to change the slope of the film's characteristic curve whatsoever. It's going to remain the same. The slope is tr translates to mid-tone relationships, mid-tone contrast. The steeper the slope, the more contrast, the more separation between tonalities. With extreme minimal agitation or stand development or, or semi-stand development, the, this characteristic curve would look more like this. So you can see, if this is the toe, it comes out of the toe quicker, and the straight line is steeper. Well, that simply means that the mid-tone relationships are going to separate greater. That whole part, that whole word separation is a key to everything I'm trying to do. I'm trying to separate tonalities. I'm trying to separate mid-tone contrast, and that is why extreme minimal agitation in concert with the way I process, or the way I design negatives, and the way I print those resulting negatives, they, the, all three are dependent on one another. To the point where I can, I'm able to exploit each one of those because of one another, if that makes sense. So let me just quickly erase this and kind of show you what happens with um, an adjacency effect. If you have tonalities, differing tonalities, all through. The mid-tone area. Think back to the explanation about um, the highlights 
exhaust the developer faster than the, shat than the uh, lower values. Well, what ends up happening, you get these microscopic relationships of differing tonalities that are adjacent to one another, that abut one another. Well, what ends up happening, the side, let's say, of, of some contrast, of some mid-tone contrast, the, the side that has more density, it uses up that developer faster than it does than the lower side, the lower uh, exposed um, shadow values. So what ends up happening is it leaches away some of the developer from that just that edge of the shadow value as opposed to the highlight value. So you you end up with what's commonly referred to as a trough. So you get you get a highlight that that right on the microscopic edge is a little a little more dense than that same tonality as it moves farther away from the shadow. And consequently, if you reverse that, where the shadow, because right at that, that point where the, it, it's adjacent to the highlight, it actually loses a little bit of density. So you end up with, and I've only heard this term once before, and was written by Edward Weston. You end up with this line. He would refer to it as a Mackie line. That is, that is what makes the mid-tone contrast appear more vibrant and because it's an organic process it's smoother than let's say an unsharp masking or some type of masking done with a computer that's what an adjacency effect is so to be clear I want, I want to tie this all together uh, in the article and explain and give you my recipe and uh, reiterate again that you cannot deviate from the recipe. It's a very, very delicate relationship that's taken three to four years for me to perfect. And to be honest, you're going to see a video, uh, you're going to see some negative comparisons from early on in the whole process, and then you'll see some negatives that I presently design and how different they are. We have two negatives here. The negative on the top right here is a traditionally exposed zone system negative where it has very, very carefully calculated a zone 2 information right in there, and over here is zone 8 uh, information. And as it happens, you can see that the negative density of this particular negative is 1.28. That's essentially a perfect negative for graded papers, single graded papers. Um, and as it happens, this is a negative that I exposed in 2005 and subsequently brought to Michael A. Smith. And um, he, uh, he critiqued it and criticized it as looking too fractured. In other words, he thought uh, the tonalities were too exaggerated and there was too much of an edge effect to it, adjacency effect. And you can almost see the Mackey line that uh, we'll talk about later on in the article right there where you see this, this dissimilar or um, an area of, of lack of density because of minimal agitation. The negative on the bottom is a negative that is almost essentially perfectly exposed and processed to my way of um, designing negatives in 2018 in that it has a lot of, a lot of shadow information. You can see down in here in, in, the, in the more um, shadowed areas that it has a lot of exposure as compared to these areas. But the highlights in this area are only at uh, 1.07. That's almost perfect for a contact print. I do like a little bit more density in contact prints than in, in large prints. But so this is this is essentially the evolution of my process since 2005, all the way until uh, 2013. Or so you can see in this ultra close-up, we have a zone 8 density right here, probably backed up against, immediately backed up against about a zone 2 density. You can almost see a Mackie line here with the naked eye. That's because the adjacency effects for this particular negative are so high that many photographers have thought that, as I actually said, it does not look photographic. The negative doesn't look photographic. It is so sharp. The adjacency effects are so high because of the way it was processed. My process has as we just saw in the previous video segment, has actually changed from this particular. What you see here is an ultra close-up of a negative that's more representative of how I designed negatives in 2018. This negative was uh, for, taken from last summer. And what you see is you'll see shadow values, darker values, zones 4 and 5. They're much higher on the scale than, the, than what you saw in the previous negative from 2005. 
But these, these tonalities are right adjacent to the highest, most dense area of the negative, at least through film development. And so what you have is a much flatter looking negative than what was traditionally um, accepted years ago. And what this does is you still take advantage of the extreme minimal agitation technique and look at the, the, uh, the carvings of the striations, the drillings of this granite wall and just how, how much resolution there is to uh, those tonalities or separation there is for those tonalities. Because there's been so much information compacted uh, through exposure and development, that turns around and is exploited and is magnified with multi-contrast paper.